Most years, Easter comes with pastel colors and familiar traditions. We look forward to the egg hunt in the yard and maybe a big meal in the afternoon with family or friends and, of course, revisiting the ancient, beloved story of Easter morning. But in the last month, the whole world is shut down. So this year, maybe, Easter comes to us from a different angle and in a new light. The theologian Walter Brueggemann said that if you read the Psalms, those ancient Jewish texts, you can divide them into three categories. He said that there are Psalms of orientation, which describe a world that is normal and familiar. He said there are Psalms of disorientation, when all is plunged into confusion and a pit of despair with seemingly no way out. And thirdly, he said there are Psalms of reorientation, in which we are lifted up out of that pit and can see the world anew as if for the first time, saturated with holy beauty we might not have otherwise seen. He said that these aren't just categories to describe how to look at the Psalms, but also how to understand phases of our own lives. If that's true, then it may be that the life we had known in conditions of orientation and familiarity now have been plunged into a time and a season this Easter of disorientation. Imagine waking up early before dawn that first Easter morning. Those who loved Jesus, who called him teacher, could hardly believe their great loss. They knew the domination of the Roman Empire. They had seen other crucifixions and grieved other losses but it wasn't supposed to happen to him. Jesus' death was unthinkable. And by unthinkable, I mean those things that we can't quite look at rationally. We can't quite look at it head on. Both the terrible and the beautiful can at times be unthinkable. It's those experiences we have and wonder, did that really happen? So Mary and the other disciples were left wondering, how could it be that he is gone when just a few days ago all seemed hopeful and triumphant? A healer and a liberator was entering Jerusalem, the embodiment of their hope. Mary was in that place of shock and grief that follows the loss of someone dear when your whole world is turned inside out. Many of you have experienced that place before. She stays near Jesus' tomb. She weeps and she grieves and she wants to care for his body as was the custom. But to her surprise, he's not there, or at least his body isn't. And now it's even more disorienting. She can't even do the ritual she's supposed to be doing. What in the world is happening? What we are living through right now is also unthinkable in its own way. None of us have ever lived through a global pandemic. We thought it was a thing of the past. Just a few short months ago, we could not have imagined this life that we're in now. We could not have imagined people sick and dying of the same disease every single day all over the globe. We could not have imagined that we would have lived through four weeks of physical distancing from people that we love, four weeks of schools closed, four weeks of wearing gloves and masks when we go out to the grocery store, four weeks of businesses being shuttered and people out of work more and more every day. In this time of grief, we can't even gather in person for our grounding rituals of comfort. In this time of disorientation, we realize that nothing will ever be the same again. To think that we will be the same again is to deny the depth of the losses we have experienced. The women in the gospel stories of Jesus' death had that wisdom. 
the wisdom to not deny the depth of the loss, the wisdom to stay, to not run away, to stay and to weep, to grieve, to remember. When our hearts and our sense of reality is broken open, broken wide open, perhaps this is the time when we are most able to hear and to heed love's call. In the Easter story, there comes this moment where Mary is there and her heart is broken wide open. Her whole sense of reality is broken wide open. All that she had hoped for, counted on, is now gone from the world. And it's just at that moment that the unthinkable happens. A stranger approaches her and greets her. She doesn't know who he is. She thinks he's the gardener. And then he calls her by name. Mary, he says. And it's like she wakes up. Walter Brueggemann might say that this was a moment of reorientation, or you might say it was the resurrection of all that had been lost and seemingly gone from the world. Teacher, she cries out. And maybe you know what that moment is like in your own life. Maybe it was a time when you were falling in love or falling back in love after a very long time. Maybe there was this afternoon when you were out in the woods and the whole world seemed to glisten or some time when you were heartbroken at church and someone sang a song and you knew you were reminded that we are never alone. This is the nature of love. It calls out to us in a particular way with a particular song. I think about it sort of like the Australian zebra finches. Ornithologists have discovered that the mother zebra finch uh, will sing to her uh, eggs in a particular way, depending on the temperature that year. In a warmer year, she'll sing one song. In a cooler year, she'll sing another. And depending on that song, they've identified the song as the variable. Depending on that song, those hatchlings will come into the world and develop to a particular size. This is the nature of love. It sings into our lives with a particular purpose in a particular way for a particular moment. And we are invited when we hear it to respond with our lives. What is it this morning love is singing to you? What's the invitation that love's putting out, hoping you will say yes? If you said yes, if you accepted, if you experienced that moment of reorientation when all the world was reborn, now in holy beauty, what would that be like? This Easter, our resurrection, our rising up in joy and thanksgiving does not have to be a shallow reenactment of someone else's story. It does not have to be a tired retelling of a story that we've never quite really believed before anyway. It doesn't even have to be just a, a sunny spring day with bunnies uh, and eggs. This Easter, we find ourselves living in a new world with new meanings. Out of the confusion and the grief and the fear of this time, love yet calls each one of us by our names, turns our heads and our hearts towards what is ours to do, reorients us to what is our purpose in this time and in this place. We won't be going back to the way things were because we have been changed along with the world. To think that we will be the same people on the other side of this is to deny the possibility that we might yet live into a world with more love and compassion and justice for all people. When love calls us, each one of us individually, perhaps we know in our bones that we must rely on one another for our safety. And so we stay apart and yet stay more connected in some ways than we ever have been before. And we do things like make our own masks to protect the healthcare workers. And we send our money to support 
those laid off workers and we do the grocery shopping for the neighbors and we ask the elected officials, we demand that the elected officials let people out of the jails and the detention centers so that they may have a chance at life. And we make our concerts and our classes free for everyone. We share what we have with those in need. When love calls us, perhaps we can slow down. We don't have to rush around doing all the things, buying all the things, trying to be all the things. We can let others help us. We can be the people love calls us to be. And when love calls us, perhaps we are able to see that despite the deep inequities and disparities in our country, there actually is enough food, enough work, enough rest, enough housing, enough income, enough health care for all. And we know we are the ones to make it true. When love calls us, even in the midst of the terrible unthinkable, may we know more deeply than ever how we are meant to rise up. Powerful and unafraid, we rise up over and over and over again for each other and in the service of life. This Easter, may we rise with joy, called by name, by a love that never leaves us, called to our new purpose in this world. May it be so. Amen.